Hello, everybody. It is Friday, March the 4th, 2022, and we're here for the month three patterns for Garden Party Down Under, which is the um, wonderful design that Irene Blank did exclusively for the quilt show .com as our 2022 block of the month. Um, I am thrilled to be able to go on the forum and see you all posting your progress. It's really great to see. And we have uh, each month, there's a month three in the case, this case, show your progress here. And there's a month three, ask your questions here. And if you'll use those two topics to um, bring your uh, quilts to our attention and your questions to our attention, that's a great way uh, to help instead of don't start a new topic on that so that people don't have to open many, many, many topics just in order to see your quilts. Um, anyway, it's just great to see them. Irene even, I encouraged her uh, last week, I was in contact with her and I suggested she go look at the pictures. She mostly stays on Instagram, so she wasn't seeing a lot of these and she was very happy to see uh, so much of the, the quilts that she was able to see that you're working on with her pattern, um, which is really uh, fun for a designer to see. I want to start with um, updates to two patterns. We updated a little bit of month two and we updated a month three. So I'm going to go right now to the document camera so we can get started and I can show you these uh, updates. Okay, the uh, first one is for month two when uh, a, a really... <laughs> One of our forum members brought this to our attention on the forum. She discovered something. She actually did what I tell you to do, which is read Irene's instructions carefully. And um, when I made the sample quilt last year, I used the pattern that I had last year, which was the same pattern that you had when we started this month. And I had a photograph of Irene's quilt. I hadn't seen the real quilt yet until mine was completely done. So in both cases, the pattern and the picture that I had to go on did not include leaves at the basket corners. And the pattern that we had that went up um, on the 1st of February was that original pattern that didn't have leaves. But in her instructions, for those of you who actually read the instructions, uh, way down deep toward the end after you added the dog tooth border, it told you to add the um, two dangling borders that went into the dog tooth border. I mentioned that uh, several times in several places. And to also add the two leaves at the basket corners. I missed that completely because I wasn't looking for it. So we have updated page one of the month two pattern, applique pattern, to include those leaves, and the month two page, page two, that shows those two leaves in place. And you can see that because they overlap the seam of the basket corner, you would have to wait until the border was assembled before you could put those leaves on. So that has been updated. And I did go ahead and add those leaves here into my baskets. This is my demo quilt sample that I'm making of this is month one and two. And I've just got, I've added all eight leaves. So I just have those in there. The quilt that's on the wall behind me, and when we go back to the webcam, you can see it behind me. Those are never going to get those leaves. I am not going in now to a completely finished quilt and trying to add stems and leaves. They will just, that will just be all by itself, just like that without the leaves. But this is in there and the pattern has been updated for you. All you would need to print if you wanted to update your pattern is page two for this block corner block and page one that shows the leaves in the four corners. So that was the update to month two. Month three, and we also did an update for month three. And um, the other day when month three went up, um, pretty quickly, someone contact, put a forum item uh, there on their ask your questions here, month three, ask your questions here. And she said, I can't find the templates for the Dresden plates. And I thought to myself, well, I'm sure they're there. Let me go find them. And sure enough, they weren't there. Irene's instructions are to use the paper pieces, petals, and circle. These are cardboard, very lightweight cardboard templates. And in her introduction and the fabric listing that we have, this right there on the very first home page of the 2022 block of the month, at the very last page lists all of Irene's uh, recommended supplies. And those particular paper pieces packages are listed there. They are tiny. These are, uh, if you were to go to paperpieces.com, it's not under Dresden plate, which is what we typically call this shape. They call it a 12 petal chrysanthemum. It's the one inch 12 petal chrysanthemum. And by one inch, it means that this measurement from this side is one inch. And of course, the other side is one inch as well. 
Um, but you didn't have the templates here. And if you didn't want to do English paper piecing, which is um, gluing the shapes around this little piece of uh, lightweight cardboard, or you wanted to piece it by hand or by machine, you need to know what the template sizes are. So I went on the forum and I told you what size it was and how you could draw it. I gave you the measurements for the templates and for the circle, what size it is. Um, and then um, someone else recommended that, that the site, we had a complete page for block, uh, the, the piece block this month, which is the uh, four point patch on point. And it showed the Dresden in the middle, but it was too small to fit on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. But if you increase that printing, if you printed it at 160%, it would give you the size that you need. But um, we still thought it might be helpful to have this page available to you so that you could print it out yourself. So it is a PDF. It's another. It's in the pattern slash document for month three. It's called Dresden Plate. It looks just like this. When you print it, you need to be sure you have printed it the correct size. And here's how you'll know. This little flower shape, chrysanthemum or Dresden Plate, whatever you want to call it, measures from tip to tip three and three quarters. And from tip to tip or thereabouts, pretty close. Um, tip to tip, this one is three and... Oh, just slightly less than three quarters. Depends on where you cut the black lines off. So very close. You remember that this is going to be applied once you've made this plate, it's going to be applied to a four and a half inch square so that uh, when it's sewn into the quilt itself, it'll be four inches finished all the way around. So these tips cannot be four inches. They need to be less than four inches to give that little bit of breathing room around. So three and three quarters or thereabouts from tip to tip, the center circle is one and a quarter. And that's, um, I use Karen K. Buckley's uh, perfect circles. And she has, obviously she has this, that's a standard size, one and a quarter. So she has that. So um, here's the little petals. So if you want to make your own templates, you simply print this, make sure it's the right size. And then if you were making the 12 of these, you could cut out all 12 and use those. You could print this onto a lightweight cardstock and cut it, it automatically. It would be the right size um, for these little templates. You could trace them onto cardstock, whatever you decided to do. Um, just be sure that it's not bigger than three and three quarters so that it will fit on your size all, um, on your block that will be four inches finished for the quilt. We will talk more about that in a few minutes. There are two videos for month three. Um, one's about 11 minutes long. One's just under 14 minutes long. One is on the Dresden plates and one is on the four patches on point. So please take time to look at those videos. Uh, they answer these questions and they show you um, some tips on how to make these particular um, blocks for this particular, for this month. So those are our updates for months two and three. Okay, let's go on and talk about the applique pattern. Move that out of my way just a little bit. And I'll bring the applique pattern over here. Okay, This month, this is block two, because block one was the large center vase. Remember, it used nine pieces of paper to make that big block. Going forward, the uh, vases are either going to be four sheets of paper or two sheets of paper. This one is one of those that's four. And um, so it's block two for month three. When you get them printed and you tape them together, you fold them on the lines and it says join this line to this line and all that, you need to make sure it's the right size. And here, this is very important on this one, okay? This is not a square block. This is a rectangular block. So this block measures 13 inches wide from dark line to dark line, I have my ruler in the wrong direction. Okay, dark line to dark line, 13 inches. And high is 12 inches, 12 from top to bottom. So when you have your, that's finished size. So that's these dark lines that represent the finished size. It will have a quarter inch seam allowance, obviously, outside of that. And I'm going to talk much more about that in a few minutes as well. But that's how you can tell that you have printed it correctly. The If it's too big or too small, you can, uh, if it's slightly too big or too small, you can move the things together, the pages a little bit to make it the size you need or spread them out just a little. Um, but if, if it's way big, you would know that before you got started. Remember that Irene's instructions for cutting the background, have you cut a much, uh, not a much larger, but a larger piece of fabric. Applique tends to shrink up a little bit. And if things got off center, it's when we trim it at the end that you trim it to the correct size. We're going to trim these 
to 13 and a half wide by 12 and a half high. And I'm going to give you a really good trick uh, for making that work. But that's how you can be sure that these patterns are correct. The next thing that I want to talk about is, um, since it's laying here, I'm going to talk about this next little step first. I get myself in trouble with this all the time. I have a tendency to jump in with both feet and um, think that I'm getting everything uh, ready. And then I find out that I have put something down before I should have put it down. So Irene's instructions and the general instructions tell you to study the pattern and think about and decide what's going to go where first. So normally for me, it's going to be the stems. So this stem, this one, and this one can obviously, they go under the lip of the vase. Nothing else goes under them. These leaves and the circles touch, get very close to the edge of the stems, but they don't go under the stems. The flowers go on top of the stems. So these three stems could go down first. But when I come to this other side, I have to be aware of a few things. Here's a little stem that's going to go under this flower and under this longer stem. So on this side, I would put it down first. Over here, I have this leaf shape number two, and it also goes under this long stem. So this and this have to be placed before I can put the longer stem on top. But that longer stem also covers this other smaller stem that's here on the far left. And when you, you can see that it goes under here, the dashed lines indicate under, that the piece that you're seeing is under if it's a dashed line. But here is the tricky part. These two leaves, shape number two, go under this stem, but on top of the basket handle. So uh, because Irene does everything by hand applique, she lightly glues the pieces in place. She probably put a dot of glue like here and a dot of glue right here. She doesn't secure glue the whole thing down. She could just get those going. And once she had this uh, little, the tail end, the short end of these leaves tucked under, put those in place, she'd only have to hand applique a little bit of that. Then she could put this other stem on top, this stem, little short stem, and this other leaf here, put this on here, and once all four of these long pieces that go under the lip of the vase are in place, then you can put the vase on top. And I have a paper vase and I can show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, so if I were to, um, because I'm doing mine by machine applique, if I had machine applique this shape completely in place, first before I put the stem down, which is something I would probably do. Then when I got to the vase, I go, oh no, the vase handle covers these leaves. And in fact, the leaf is supposed to be on top of the handle. Okay, It might not be a disaster, but the design is much better with the leaf on top of the handle than it is uh, under the handle. So for um, hand the machine applique, I would just want to get these, uh, maybe just glue them in place there so that you can put this stem here and then add the remaining stem, put the vase in place, and then finish putting the uh, applique around these remaining two leaves. So you want to study it to get an idea of what goes where first. I think I do. And so far, just about every one of these blocks I've made, I have found I have missed somebody and he's got put down too soon than I should have waited. So it's just one of those things. Okay, now let's talk about one other aspect of machine applique with a fusible product like print and piece fuse light versus the um, hand applique. With hand applique, you would, um, as Irene's instructions clearly tell you, she, you have your pattern put together. You've got a light box of some sort underneath a light box. You put your fabric on top and you trace on the front side of the, in this case, the vase fabric and cut it out. And it's going to exactly match the pattern. But I'm using print and piece fuse light. I'm printing it onto the product or I'm tracing it onto a piece of it uh, on the pattern. And because if, if this is the piece that I've cut out of print and piece fuse light, because the fusing is on the back, when I adhere it to the fabric, to the wrong side of the fabric, and I turn it over, then my handle is on the wrong side. My handle's on the other side. And I'm fine with that. I can live with that. And that's what I've done. And so it doesn't bother me. There's, and we've talked before, um, there's been information about this before. And um, one of the videos that stays in the beginning video is how to do this that with machine applique. 
that you could print it differently and all that kind of thing. But um, whatever the method you choose to use, if you're going to print this and use it on the fusible, you want to be aware that your handle is going to be reversed. So here I have uh, one of my great students who is taking a class. I'm teaching a year-long class locally for this quilt um, where we meet every other month for two hours and it's just kind of lecture demo. I walk them through the process and they bring their questions and they show us all what they're doing. It's really a lot of fun and they enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, her name's Amanda and she came up with this terrific idea. I've learned about window templates a hundred years ago, but I'd forgotten how handy they could be. So here um, are window templates that I made to audition the fabrics for the vase. I'm using the kit for these uh, this demo quilt and some of the um, kit fabrics, I, I, when I just look at the 10 inch square, I don't see a vase. So here I have two of these that I've cut. One is not reversed and one is reversed. And uh, the reversed one tells me is for fusible because if I look at it this way, when I fuse it to the wrong side of the fabric, my handle is going to be on the other side. So I wanted to be able to see it in both cases. But it's just a piece of newsprint. You could use tracing paper or vellum if you want to be able to see through the whole thing. You want to remember, here's important if you're using a fusible product, if this were the piece that I was cutting out of fusible to put on the reverse side of the fabric, you have to cut this paper out. If you were to adhere the whole thing with the paper still in place, then you have to cut it out from the fabric and you're not going to have seam allowance. You're going to have to actually cut right on the finish line and do something to securely finish that edge. So that little piece that I took out is actually right here. And I just use uh, cellophane tape to hold it in place so I can see it. And this is so helpful to me in looking at these fabrics that are designated for the vases. The 10 inch squares in the kit are designated as vase fabrics. And of course you could use anything you want, but that's what they were designed for in the kit. So this pink fabric is, um, if not the exact same one that Irene used for her month three, it's very, very close. And her month three was made out of a black and gray kind of combination, these little diamonds. I think it's probably the same fabric, just in a different colorway. But see how you can put this here and slide it around? Here I would have two of these great turquoise um, triangles. If I came up here, I would only have one. And you can kind of play around to see where it is, what it is that you might see. I could lay it out and see whether it's the vase fabric that I wanted to use for this particular vase. So this is what mine look like because mine's backwards. And if we use the other one, this is what it would look like here if you were going with the way so that it looks like Irene's. Um, but anyway, it's, it's a handy dandy little thing. And um, I am very thankful that Amanda showed that to all of us in the class so I can share that with you. And um, I put it on the blog and um, put that information out there. So what else do I want to tell you about this one? Okay, this time with quarter inch stems, I used Karen K. Buckley's Perfect Stems tools. They're a plastic um, tubes, not tubes, they're plastic bars that go inside. She is featured as she's one of our shows that's featured. She's a great teacher. And she is also one of the ones featured in our master class for applique class number one. And so in less than 10 minutes, you can watch her make perfect circles with her uh, perfect circle templates and use the bars to make perfect stems. Normally, I just cut my stems three times the finished width. So for me, I'd cut them three quarters of an inch and then stand on my iron and turn both edges under and press it securely. I'm not always super, super straight with those. They get crookedy and that kind of thing. So I did find that when I used her bars for this, which had to be cut one and a quarter instead of one and three quarters, and there is a little seam allowance on the back, but they're straighter. So um, I had better luck getting straighter stems if I did that. Uh, her method, but which, and there's several other ways to make stems as well. So whatever helps um, for you is what you should use. Okay, now I'm going to show you my block. Okay. Here's my block. And remember, I told you that my block was going to have the vase reve reverse. Well, <laughs> not only I, I did reverse the block, but I didn't reverse any of the flowers. So I didn't run into that problem with this wonky number two leaf going on top of the uh, handle because the handle's over here. 
And these leaves don't go under this stem. They get put on after the stem is in place and after the vase is in place. So this was a great solution for me, and I didn't even know it was going to be a great solution until I, till I started putting this presentation together. And I thought, hmm, let me show you how um, this is just another way to do it. So this is a fabric I chose to use this. It reminded me of those enamel pots and jugs, and I thought that was a really good fabric for this vase, so that's what I used. I'm going to also mention one other thing. There are quite a few places in this entire quilt that use double circles and some even maybe triple circles. And what I have found work be works best for me when we have double circles, as these are, these four centers to this, um, these flowers are double circles. First, I made the smaller circles, this red and white dot fabric. I made those the size they should be with the uh, plastic templates and did the drawing, you know, cut, cut around with a thread and drew it up and starched it and all that. Then I applicate, I'm doing machine applique, so I machine applique the star, the little circles to a square of yellow. I think I cut it two and a half inches. It just had to be bigger than the size that I was going to need. If I had made the yellow circle first and then the red circle and put those together, it's just a little more fiddly to try to line them up just right. And even those, this one looks like it's pretty close to perfectly centered. This one's off a little bit. This one's off a little bit. But I'll bet you in nature, the flowers are going to be off a little bit too. It doesn't bother me in the least. You only see it if you're really studying it. And from any distance at all, you won't see that. But I just found it easier to make the smaller circles, applique those on top of a square, in this case, yellow. And then um, using the template again for the size of the yellow circle. I drew on the line on the back and cut out with the seam allowance, did the little gathering stitch. And then when I put the plastic template for this size, the larger the yellow circle in there, the red was already in place and I could move it around and fiddle with it just a little bit to try to make sure that I had that center pretty centered, the red center circle. So there's going to be quite a few of these throughout the quilt where we do multiple layers of um, circles primarily. And that's just how I found that works best for me. Um, okay, now here is the tip that's going to make today's class worth everything. Today's visit. All right, this quilt block is not a square. I'll say that again. It's not a square. It is 13 inches finished in width and 12 inches finished in height. That is not a square. That's a rectangle. And it's tricky to figure out how to cut that accurately when you're cutting it out. I have a 12 and a half inch square and it would be really easy to plop that 12 and a half inch square on there and cut around it and go, oh no, oh no, I've just cut off. I'm missing a half of an inch. So here's what I did. Okay. I took two pieces of vellum, uh, tracing paper is another name for it. This vellum I got at uh, a big box store. It ha comes on a pad. They're nine inches by 12 inches. So that's great. The 12 inch height just came right off the pad, nine by 12. And I cut a second piece so I could cut another piece that would I could tape. And I've simply taped it here to generate what I'm calling, come on, let's see if I can put it where you can really read the words. I'm calling it my cutting guide, 13 inches wide by 12 inches high cutting guide, Add seam allowances, big print, underline, exclamation point, add seam allowances to this. I suppose you could cut one out with the seam allowances already included, but because that pad was already nine, uh, 12 inches, I just said I'm going to do it this way without the seam allowances inside. So remember we started with a larger background fabric. Irene's instructions tell you exactly what size to cut this background fabric when we start because applique tends to pull in a little bit. So we start with a bigger piece. And then I folded it in half lengthwise and in half crosswise, and I can still see those folds right there. In addition with this cutting guide, once I got it taped together, I just used a Sharpie and an accurate ruler, and I drew a midpoint line. This is at six and a half, because this is 13 inches wide. Half of that is um, six and three quarters, excuse me, half of 13, no. Half of 13 is six and a half. So that's at six and a half. And then this one's at six. So I have the midpoint. If I lay this crosshairs, the midpoint, directly on the fold lines where I had originally folded the fabric, okay, I'm going to discover that this little tip right here of this flower 
is going to be within the seam allowance. I don't want that. I absolutely don't want that. I want you to see that whole flower. So it's a simple matter because we cut this extra large. And this, if for no other reason than to show you that, is why we start with a larger piece of background fabric. So you have a little wiggle room here at the end. It's a lot of work to have to start over because you got pieces outside the design area. So I can move this over a little bit. I'm just going to work on this side. Okay. I can move it and I'm checking both sides. I'm looking over on my left hand side to make sure I have space there that that flower on the outside. Let me move it a little bit more. Maybe you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. I need room here and I need a little room here. Same thing with the bottom. You don't want it like this so you lose the bottom of your vase. You need a little bit of space there and a little bit of space there and you got to watch the top but you got enough up there at the top and I'm good. Once I have this where I want it, I'm going to use a marker that I know will come out. This is the Quilter Select Self Erase Marker. I marked this last week to prove this to myself that I like the way it worked and the lines are, are gone. So once you had it here like this, you could put a few pins in place if you wanted to. All I'm going to do is making sure that I have it where I want it while we're sitting here together. Okay. Okay. And using the edge of the paper, which remember is the finished size. This paper is 13 wide by 12 high. I'm just going to use this marker and give myself a corner. And I will do the same thing on this corner and on the two corners up there. There'd be no reason why you couldn't give yourself a couple extra tick marks over here. The, you want to make sure you're using some kind of a pen that you or marker, light with a pencil touch or something like that, that in case you put it in the wrong place or it moved on you, that that line will not be within your design area and be visible during the quilt. But once you have those marks there, it's just a simple matter to use a ruler. And this one is only 12 inches long. I would probably use a longer one. But remember, 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 that is the finished edge line. We need to add a quarter of an inch to that quarter of an inch all the way around to add that seam allowance back in there. And if you think that would get you confused before you cut anything, once you've got these marks, make the additional mark over here. Use that quarter inch and just put yourself another mark so you know that that's where you're going to cut. This is just too much work to cut it the wrong size and have to start over again or figure out a way to make the block large again. So this having this cute little thing here, um, my little cutting guide, I call it 13 wide by 12 inches high, just is the best way for me. Because last year when I made these and trimmed these blocks, because I trimmed everybody's blocks up, it was really hairy. I was really worried about getting those um, pieces in there the way they needed to be. So um, hopefully you'll find that helpful. Okay. All right. All right. I'm just going to move on quickly now because we're eating up time to the next part. And that is the piece block. There are videos. I'll mention those again. There's a video on the Dresden plate this little guy and there's a video on the four patches on point and they go into much more than I can do right here even the blog I do the videos first and then I'll think of something a few days later when I'm preparing the blog and putting in photographs and there'll be something else that I add to that so the, the blog is still a very helpful resource as well and the forum is a great place please to ask your questions if something isn't isn't clear so when you're working with small pieces like this it becomes very important to uh, the cutting the sewing and the pressing that you do those carefully and I just uh, I followed the directions the uh, there are important cutting measurements Irene's instructions for making these four patches they are oversized when you make the squares they are larger than they need to be and then you trim it to size the video shows you exactly how to do that and then you add these triangle pieces that's what makes it on point the four patch started like this and then we added four triangles to put it on point like this and um, these once the four patch is made it has to be trimmed to a very specific size and these corners have to be trimmed to a very specific size they are not the same these are trimmed to three and one quarter these are trimmed to three and one half or started out that size they're not trimmed down to it that's what they start well the four patches gets trimmed to that but um, but the video shows that the blog shows it her instructions are good with this. It shows all of that. So uh, in this block, which we make this month, month three, and again, she uses the same exact block, same sizes in month four. So um, exactly the same. 
And that little picture that I showed you earlier, our additional PDF page, is going to be used six times, months three, four, six, seven, eight, and nine. And that pattern will be repeated each of those months as well. It's the same exact pattern. There's, we won't be changing anything to it. So when you get these all put together and you make your little things, you can decide whether you want four different squares, as I did here, or two purples, two yellows, the same here, whatever pleases you. Um, basically, she tells you to have lights and darks, and that's where you're looking for some contrast. Um, you get these little things all put together. The Little Dresdens, um, the video covers a lot of this, and I'm not going to go back through it again, but I did um, machine piece one. This one was done English paper piecing with the papers inside, and then I took the papers out. And this one, I used the papers to make the petals, but I machine pieced it. I used glue stick to turn these edges under, and then I was going to... Um, machine applique this and after I got it placed on there I thought you know that's just so cute um, that's a nice at night watching listening to television um, is when I sit there and I so I hand applique this uh, all the way around and with the circle got put on top and Irene's instructions for this background for the Dresden plate tells you to cut them four and a half in the same way that we cut the large um, background of your applique larger, I found it was more helpful, easier for me, and smarter for me to cut this square five inches instead of four and a half. And then I folded it in half lengthwise and crosswise and pressed it, and then on both diagonals, and I can still see those folds. So when I placed the plate on top of those lines, on top of this big square, I could line it up so that I really had it centered, and then it has to be trimmed. And I haven't trimmed these down yet because tomorrow's class that I meet with here locally, I will show this to them. This is still five inches, and I'm going to trim it down to four and a half because it is four and a half when it gets is ready to be sewn into the block. Um, as I mentioned, there are six piece blocks in the quilt and all six of them in Irene's design uses this exact same Dresden plate. I uh, had two of us made these two for my block. And when we got to month six, seven, eight, nine, and I was preparing kits for my wonderful helpers, the Sunday so-and-sos that helped me make it, um, they, the, the four of those people had not done English paper piecing before. And those little petals are pretty tiny to learn on. So I simply made a change. The four remaining pieced blocks that go in the four corners of the quilt, I um, designed for them a double heart. And all I did was take a piece of paper, fold it in half, do the half shape, cut it out. And that was my small heart. I did the same thing with the large heart. So this was just easy, uh, an alternative center. You can do anything you want in the center. There are flowers that we've already been given that would fit in here. If you didn't even want applique, you could put another piece block in the center and just have nine piece blocks in the whole block. So it's your quilt, you get to decide. And let me see how we're doing here. The, yeah, the block is 12 and a half inches uh, when it's been sewn together and trimmed. And so you'll want to make sure that you've got those right. right. When you're working with smaller pieces, if you um, struggle with piecing, you'll want to check your seam allowance. And the easiest way to do that is while you're getting these pieces sewn together. So I would sew this block to this block, this one to this one, and this one to this one. Check yourself before you go on. When, uh, the measurements that these should be, because these will be four inches finished, four inches finished, seam allowance on both sides should be eight and a half. It's not four and a half and four and a half, which would be nine. It's finished size plus seam allowance. And if you're not sure that you have your seam allowance just right for the smaller piecing, sew two of these together, these two, these two, these two, and check them before you put the additional one on. I always say that if they're not the right size now, they will not miraculously become the right size when you do the next step. And then finally, when that third one is on each row, it's 12 and a half, four plus four plus four plus a quarter inch on both sides, 12 and a half. And if you check yourself as you go, uh, you will have more success having a finished block being 12 and a half inches. And okay, so for next month, You'll make another one of these, um, just exactly the same. You use different fabrics if you wanted to, or the same fabrics, which whatever suits you. Um, we'll do that again. There will be another applique block. And um, we've got something different with that va vase. It shows uh, we have a, there's a lip, a backside of the vase, and we have to put it down first. And, and of course, last summer when I made mine, I didn't. And I had to take those stems up and get it fixed. So I'm going to help you prevent making that mistake um, that I did that. Um, 
All right, so we're getting along here in time. So let me go back to the webcam. All righty, all right. So um, my quilt on the wall behind me has the block, uh, month three's block in the upper, just above my head there, kind of slightly over to the right as I look at the screen, is the block that Pam R. made for me. She was one of our great Sunday so-and-sos. And she reversed the vase and she reversed all the flowers. So those um, petals that we talked about that go on top of the, you know, this one, these, these leaves over, leaves? No, <laughs> leaves that go on top of the handle. Pam does have them on top of the handle, and mine doesn't um, because I just didn't reverse all the flowers. So that's that. But the nice thing about this is once you have um, the applique block finished for month three, and you've trimmed it to the exact right size, which is three and a half wide by 12 and a half high, you sew this pieced block to the right hand side. And I should have done this while we were down on the camera. But and then the instructions tell you. So the piece block to the right side of the um, applique block. And that starts that top row up there. Um, so that's the uh, month three instructions for that. Uh, okay, let me look and see if we have any questions. And I get to see who's here. Okay. Oh. Uh, Okay, somebody, Melanie, like the double circles idea. Go back to the beginning here. Okay, got folks from all over. All right, yes, um, I knew that you would appreciate having that PDF to Dresden, and that's Mary Kay Davis had to stop whatever else she was doing that was important things um, that needed to get done, but she stopped this so we could get this up right away. Uh, lots of people, Florida and Virginia and North Carolina, San Antonio. I want to come to San Antonio. I want to come teach in San Antonio. I love Central Texas and San Antonio in particular. All righty. Let's see what else we got here. There's Rondi. All righty. And let me see if I got a... Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um... Good. And Maria Elena says with her printer, she adjusted the copy and she increased it to get a photo. And as long as the square measures four inches, you're going to be fine. Remember that Dresden plate just has to fit inside of a four inch square. Oakland, Tennessee, Washington. Ah, Guta Aben, aus Germany. Karin. Okay, welcome. Okay, do, 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 do. Where are the patterns? Okay. Um, I was going to go and show you, share the screen, but I'm not going to take time to do that today. We'll have more time on the next measurement where I can show you. But all of the patterns are under Learn 2022 Block of the Month. And then there, the first tabs that come up every time you go to one of the months is Videos. And the tab just to the right of that is Pattern slash Documents. And that's where they always are. Melanie's done the double. Okay, North Carolina. Okay, good. Uh, Susie joined us from Quebec and she's missed. These um, lives stay up all the time so you can go back and look at them again. Um, when, yeah, the window template for that, for the vase flower pot, that's, Noella likes that idea. That's really helpful. I looked at those kit fabrics and I just didn't see a vase. And I knew that it, what it, I'd, and I'd have to guess what it would look like. And having the window template, I could see it. Um, which is really great. And Kathy from Arlington, Oregon, is has just now discovered us. So that's great. We are happy to have you here. All right, let me go back to my... Okay, um, so that's good. I check the forum all the time, several times a day. Um, so put your questions there under month three, ask questions here. Show us your progress under month three. Show your progress here if your um, month two is up. Somebody, um, I want to say it's Peg, um, came up with a way that she made the Dresden plates with paper piecing like freezer paper, pound, the way we did Color My World. She came up with a solution that worked for her and she took the time to put up pictures on the forum and step-by-step uh, -step her instructions of how she did it. And that's really helpful. Um, she has a, this, it was a great new idea, much different from the way I made them by individual little petals. And so the forum is really a wealth of great information for you to look at. 
Um, so it's, uh, I hope you'll take some time to do that, but please watch the videos because they're there to help you. Um, and, and when I read the questions in the forum that I know were answered in the video, I know that they, um, that the video would really have helped answer that person's question. I don't want you to be struggling in the middle of the night when there's an answer right away. So, um, okay. We, I will be back on the first Friday of April, which is April 1st, April Fool's Day, but I will be here. Uh, we won't have to talk about the um, peace block because it's, a, it's exactly like today's peace block that we did, the four patch on point with the Dresden in the middle, but there is a beautiful new vase. There are pictures of the layout and that you can easily again find on Learn. Go to Learn and in the very first page of the 2022 block of the month with Irene's picture, there's a whole bunch of things there, the, her introduction, the fabric selection, and monthly layouts. And you can click on that. It will show you exactly which blocks we're doing which month. And there's pictures of them. And there is a link that you can click. Again, all thanks to Mary Kay Davis, who just does a fabulous job. And there's links that will take you to each of those pictures individually if you want to see um, a little more up close Irene's pictures uh, that are there. So um, I hope that this has been helpful. And until next time, that's a wrap.